28th day of Waiting on God by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Waiting on God for the coming of his Son. Be ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. Luke chapter 7 verse 36. Until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his own time he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 14 and 15. Turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. Waiting on God in heaven, and waiting for his Son from heaven, these two God hath joined together, and no man may put them asunder. The waiting on God for his presence and power in daily life will be the only true preparation for waiting for Christ in humility and true holiness. The waiting for Christ coming from heaven to take us to heaven will give the waiting on God its true tone of hopefulness and joy. The Father who in his own time will reveal his Son from heaven is the God who, as we wait on him, prepares us for the revelation of his Son. The present life and the coming glory are inseparably connected in God and in us. There is sometimes a danger of separating them. It is always easier to be engaged with the religion of the past or the future than to be faithful in the religion of today. As we look to what God has done in the past, or will do in time to come, the personal claim of present duty and present submission to his working may be escaped. Waiting on God must ever lead to waiting for Christ as the glorious consummation of his work, and waiting for Christ must ever remind us of the duty of waiting upon God as our only proof that the waiting for Christ is in spirit and in truth. There is such a danger of our being so occupied with the things that are coming more than with him who is to come. There is such scope in the study of coming events for imagination and reason and human ingenuity that nothing but deep, humble waiting on God can save us from mistaking the interest and pleasure of intellectual study for the true love of him and his appearing. All ye that say ye wait for Christ's coming, be sure that ye wait on God now. All ye who seek to wait on God now to reveal his Son in you, see to it that ye do so as men waiting for the revelation of his Son from heaven. The hope of that glorious appearing will strengthen you in waiting upon God for what he is to do in you now. The same omnipotent love that is to reveal the glory is working in you even now to fit you for it. The blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ is one of the great bonds of union given to God's church throughout the ages. He shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be marvelled at in all them that believe. Then we shall all meet and the unity of the body of Christ be seen in its divine glory. It will be the meeting place and the triumph of divine love. Jesus receiving his own and presenting them to the Father, his own meeting him and worshipping in speechless love that blessed face, his own meeting each other in the ecstasy of God's own love. Let us wait, long for, and love the appearing of our Lord and Heavenly Bridegroom. Tender love to him and tender love to each other is the true and only bridal spirit. I fear greatly that this is sometimes forgotten. A beloved brother in Holland was speaking about the expectancy of faith being the true sign of the bride. I ventured to express a doubt. An unworthy bride, about to be married to a prince, might only be thinking of the position and the riches that she was to receive. The expectancy of faith might be strong, and true love utterly wanting. It is not when we are most occupied with prophetic subjects, but when in humility and love we are clinging close to our Lord and his brethren, that we are in the bride's place. 
Jesus refuses to accept our love except as it is love to his disciples. Waiting for his coming means waiting for the glorious coming manifestation of the unity of the body, while we seek here to maintain that unity in humility and love. Those who love most are the most ready for his coming. Love to each other is the life and beauty of his bride, the church. And how is this to be brought about? Beloved child of God, if you would learn aright to wait for his Son from heaven, live even now waiting on God in heaven. Remember how Jesus lived ever waiting on God. He could do nothing of himself. It was God who perfected his Son through suffering and then exalted him. It is God alone who can give thee the deep spiritual life of one who is really waiting for his Son. Wait on God for it. Waiting for Christ himself is, oh, so different from waiting for things that may come to pass. The latter any Christian can do. The former, God must work in thee every day by his Holy Spirit. Therefore, all ye who wait on God, look to him for grace to wait for his Son from heaven in the Spirit which is from heaven. And ye who would wait for his Son, wait on God continually to reveal Christ in you. The revelation of Christ in us, as it is given to them who wait upon God, is the true preparation for the full revelation of Christ in glory. My soul, wait thou only upon God. End of 28th Day